in my last video, I was sharing about the fact that this coming Passover could be the covenant with many, which is a blood covenant, which nobody realizes. But the way that I figured it out was because it starts the sacrificial system and the sacrificial system is stopped halfway through the seven years. It's the red heifer that begins the sacrificial system. Okay, so you know that from my last video and several other videos I've done. Um, just when you thought there wasn't any more to add to the fact that Passover night is by the Jews called the night of watching for the redemption. It's a night when they expect the Lord to appear to rescue them, save them. And uh, my point being is that the first fruits of the dead were resurrected at the time of Passover after Jesus came out of his grave. And there was something more that happened in the Garden of Gethsemane that's a little bit mind-blowing to see this in connection with that being the night that uh, God was watching over the Hebrews to bring them out of the bondage of ancient Egypt to deliver them and free them from this oppression that they were under, under the slavery of the Iron Furnace. So the world is considered a type of Egypt, and we're under the bondage of this wicked world as well. And the Lord came, and he's going to appear at some point and take us to be where he is, according to the scriptures in the Bible. Now, there's people that jump on here that don't know the Bible. They don't trust the Bible, and so they'll call me names, you know, as if... I'm half cracked for saying these things out of the Bible and showing you secrets that are being revealed from the scriptures. But I'm not going to listen to those people because we know the word of God is true. But there is something more to what I just said in my last video about this. Now, remember I told you that Jesus kept going to the disciples and they kept falling asleep and sleep is a sign of death. So it was really saying, you know, on the third time that he went to them, he said, sleep on now, take your rest, which was indicating that, you know, he was about to fulfill their redemption, but he was going to go away and come back in 2000 years and that they would die in that time and they would be resurrected and see him again. So what else happened on the night of watching? Now, remember, God was watching over the Hebrews. And so the Hebrews made it kind of a memorial to remember um, the night of the Passover Seder, which is the first night of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That is when they kept a memorial to watch for the Lord to come bring them their redemption and to appear suddenly to do so. And that's exactly what we're waiting for in the Harpazzo, the rapture. So guess what happened on the night of watching in the Garden of Gethsemane? The Sanhedrin, the guards, and Judas Iscariot came out to Jesus and treated him as though he was a thief. Have you come out against me as a thief? or some versions say, as a robber. So I'm going to try to do this on my phone. It's a little difficult because I have information on my phone, and I don't know how to look at the information and record at the same time. I can do that with my camera, which takes hours and hours of editing, which I really don't want to do right now. Um, but... Just think about this, okay? Let's add this to the night of watching for the Lord's redemption to come and for the Lord to appear suddenly. Okay, in Revelation 3.3, 3, Jesus said 
um, he was giving a warning to one of the churches and he said to stay awake and watch and that if you didn't watch and stay awake, he would come upon you as a thief. Then we have in Revelation, I believe it was 16, 15. He also is saying to watch, stay awake, keep awake and watching. And if you will not watch, you will not stay awake. You will not know at what time he will come upon you. And in that case, he will come upon you as a thief. So right there, the people came and guess what? They carried him away and treated him like a thief and a robber. And Jesus said that if you're not watching on the night of watching, <laughs> perhaps uh, he would come to you as a thief or a robber. So that is extremely significant. So then in the passage in Revelation 3, 3, he says to repent, and if you will not watch or not wake up, he will come to you as a thief. And listen, you will not know what hour. And then in Revelation 16, 15, again, he says that blessed are those who are watching and keep their clothes you know, their garments, lest they be found naked in their shame. Well, whenever it's talking about nakedness in the Bible, usually, you know, the Jews wear the kippah on the back of the head, and it's to remind them that there's a God above them, and that he's always watching over them and what they do. And you don't want to be, if, if you're not wearing that, and you're not acknowledging that God is uh, sovereign in your life or watching over you, then you're to be considered in a state of nakedness. So it really has to do with your spiritual condition, acknowledging God on a daily basis that he's watching over you. So blessed are those who are watching and staying awake. And is this another sign I'm asking you? that the rapture could happen on the night of watching because the people were delivered from the bondage of Egypt. God came and took them away and freed them and delivered them and was their rescuer and redeemer. And at some future point, the Jews believe that the Lord is going to come on the night of redemption. Now, what happens is, during the Passover Seder, they get up from the table and they open the door expecting Elijah to show up. Well, we know that Elijah and Moses are coming, the two witnesses that were there with Jesus as witnesses of his death, burial, and resurrection, and that he was going to fulfill all of that. And so they were witnesses to it and that they will be coming again to bring forth the plagues against the ungodly and the wicked during the wrath of God being poured out when God gives them his power to perform the same plagues that happened in ancient Egypt. In the passage in Revelation 3.3, 3, he's telling you to repent. And he says, if you're not awake and watching, he will come upon you as a thief. And listen, you will not know what hour he will come upon you. Could this be a sign of the words, no one knows the day or the hour? There was a specific hour those things were taking place, and that hour was the moment of the Lord in their midst bringing forth the redemption on the night of watching, on the night when they came against him as though he was a thief and a robber. Quite the connection, don't you think? Now let's put all this together of what was happening in the Garden of Gethsemane because in Matthew 26, 
Jesus told the disciples, stay here and keep watch. And he found them sleeping, which is symbolic of death. And could this be the time of the resurrection of the dead by him signifying this? And then he came back and said, couldn't you watch with me for one hour? And it was during that hour, the same hour that this was happening, where he was telling them to watch on the night of redemption for their redemption. Okay, so on the night that's specifically memorialized as the night of the redemption, the night of watching and God watching over us to suddenly appear and bring salvation. So I want you to pay attention to the fact that in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of watching, Jesus is telling the disciples, couldn't you watch with me for one hour? And at this same hour, this is when they came against him as a thief and a robber. So he's telling them to stay awake and watch. And we see this in the book of Revelation in Revelation 3, 3, where he said, if you were not staying awake and watching, he would come to you as a thief. So he was indicating that it was the Passover night. Do you see that? And then um, he said, watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. Okay, then he's talking and praying about taking the cup of redemption. And he says, not as thou will, not as I will, but as thou will. And then, so he takes the cup of redemption on the night of the redemption. Okay, so then he found them sleeping again. And he said, are you sleeping and resting? And he said he was going to be delivered to sinners. Rise, let's go. Here comes my betrayer, he said. And notice he's specifically saying in that same hour he was telling them to watch, to stay awake. This is when they came against him as a thief and a robber. So when he's telling us to watch for the rapture, he's saying if you're not watching and staying awake, it will he will come upon you as a thief or a robber. That's exactly what was happening in the Garden of Gethsemane. So, okay, now let me move on to this exciting part. It said that they seized him. And this is ekrateson, or krateo. And it means to seize, that they took him, or they were going to take him. Criteo is number 2902 in Strong's Concordance, and it means to seize, lay hold, and take. But there's another word, sun harpazo, that's associated with that word, criteo, sun harpazo, and it is two words put together. It means to snatch together, seize, or catch. So when they seized him, after he was talking about being a, um, coming out against him as a thief and a robber, then you have this word that means to seize, to snatch together. And it's just incredible because it's like the word harpazo. And harpazo, I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanted to say that... Harpazo is connected to the Greek word karpos, number 2590 in Strong's Concordance. Karpos, it says, is probably from the base of harpazo fruit as plucked, literally or figuratively fruit. So karpos is speaking of plucked fruit and lo and behold karpos is also called well it's it's a fruit a general vegetable sometimes animal karpos number 2590 and karpos this word comes from the greek karpos meaning 
fresh raw vegetable. So what I'm telling you is that the carpos is connected to carpus in the Passover Seder meal. The vegetable, which is parsley or celery usually, that's dipped in the salt water. The salt water is to remind them of the tears of slavery, and they dip the carpus in the salt water and eat it. And what did Jesus say? That when we go to be with him, he will wipe away all our tears. Ah, oh, it just gives me the chills. So the plucked fruit, the harpazo plucked fruit, is the word that's used of the carpus at the Passover Seder table. So they were eating that in the Passover Seder before they went out singing the Hallel, before they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was telling them to watch, and on the night of redemption for the Lord to appear and bring them their rescuing salvation. So Carpus is a vegetable other than bitter herbs representing, get this, hope and renewal. And why is that important that this is in the Passover Seder right on the night of watching they're eating this? Because he is our blessed hope. And what is the blessed hope? The rapture of the church. That he's coming for us. The carpus represents hope, the blessed hope, and renewal. So he's taking the cup of redemption on the night of watching for the redemption. And guess what else carpus represents? Not only the blessed hope, but renewal. And it was the resurrection of Jesus from the dead that makes renewal possible. And this is a symbol of hope, a remembrance of the hyssop and blood of Passover. And remember when Jesus was on the cross as the Lamb of God, they dipped the stuff in hyssop and offered it to him. And his blood was being poured out as the Passover Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. His resurrection is the first fruit of the renewal of Israel, the renewal of the Adamic dominions, the new heavens and the new earth. So all of that is signified in the Passover Seder in the carpus, which means the um, harpazo fruit, plucked fruit. And we are going to be plucked, seized, as fruit unto the Lord. And let's see what else. Strong's har Harpage, number 724, and har Harpox, 727, means to pillage or plundering. It also means robbery. It says, see Harpazo, robbery. If you're not watching, he's going to come as a thief or a robber. And number 4884, Sun Harpazo, to seize, carry away, drag by force. And then we have, let me see here. The actual word Harpazo is number 726, which also means to seize, catch up, snatch away, listen, obtain by robbery. And he was showing you that they came out against him as a thief or a robber. So the harpazo is to obtain by robbery and a prize to take by an open display of force, not covertly or secretly. I found that interesting. That's in the definition of the Strong's Concordance version of a harpazo not covertly or secretly, to snatch up suddenly, decisively, to claim for oneself eagerly, to rescue from danger of destruction, 
and its divine power transforming a person marvelously and swiftly from one place to another. And then what happened when they seized Jesus and all of this revelation is coming forth right before your eyes? Well, they led him away to the house of the high priest. And where is Jesus taking us? Jesus is our great high priest, and he's taking us to his father's house. So to sum this up, on the night of watching, which I said could definitely be the time of the resurrection, rapture of the believers, when the Hebrews were delivered from the bondage of ancient Egypt, and the earth is like Egypt in its corrupt state, and he will rescue us out of our bondage. Could this be the night of the resurrection rapture? And now we see that we have this connection of him coming as a thief and a robber. We have that connection literally in the word harpazo to um, obtain by robbery and seize. And we have the connection of the carpos, which is the carpus of the plucked fruit on the Passover Seder table. Is that not miraculous? So these are more connections to me that represent the fact that he, in the carpus, it says, well, he's taking away our bitterness, but he's giving us the blessed hope in the ra resurrection rapture, the hope of, you know, having a new body and being transformed. And the renewal is through the resurrection of our bodies because he was resurrected and taken up into heaven. And he's coming back in the glory clouds, same way he came. He's going to appear. We need to watch on the night of the watching for the redemption because it's a memorial to God for him watching and saving the Hebrews out of their bondage and delivering them. So he led them to the promised land. We are waiting for him to take us to the promised land. So we will cross over. And I told you in my last video, part of my book that's copyrighted material, I told you this whole analogy of being on an overpass. An overpass is a bridge that's above all the people on the ground that stay at the same level while you're up riding or, you know, you're up above on another level. The people on the ground stay at the same level and they are spectators on the ground looking up at those on the higher level. This is a picture of the rapture. So we will, we will go up and be on the overpass to pass over into the glory cloud while they remain on the same level and God deals with them because they're unbelieving and they're rejecting their king and they're trampling his blood underfoot as though it's a common thing. All of these things happened in the Garden of Gethsemane that show the harpazo, the seizing away, the plucking of the good fruit and taking it to be where he is. And if this doesn't thrill you even more than the last video, I don't know what will. So we saw him being seized in Matthew 26, 5. Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. And that was the word I told you was ekratesan, to seize, lay hold, which is connected to sun harpazo, snatch together, catch, to seize. You guys, this is so incredible. Don't you think? I hope this blesses everyone that hears it and that you'll see that his word is true and that he's given us this incredible hope and he's hidden things in the scriptures that jump out and come alive like right now. This is all revealed by the Holy Spirit and I pray that the Lord opens the door for more blessings and more um, divine revelation like this. What do you think about this, guys? The harpazo is in the Passover Seder, the plucked fruit.
We are it, and we're going. We're going to see our king. I hope this gives you excitement for your new year of 2024, that this coming Passover, we've got the sign of the Tav in the sky on April 8th, which is a sign, mark, signature, covenant. The red heifer ceremony is going to be the covenant with many Jews, 660 billion, they say, can be purified from their sins with one ashes of a red heifer, of one red heifer. That's how many people they can purify. We know that the ashes of the red heifer can never take away sins. The law can never save you. The law was a teacher to teach you that you were a sinner. But the only one that can keep all righteousness is the Messiah because his body was prepared for God to dwell in the body to redeem the flesh back to a Garden of Eden-like state as the second perfect Adam. And so you just really believe in his covenant with many, with his blood, and you don't need any other blood of bulls, goats, and a red heifer. It's all coming to pass. These are more signs. The thief and the robber that Jesus, that they, they came to seize him. And they took him away. They took him to the high priest's house. And he had just told the disciples to watch and stay awake watching. On the night of watching for their redemption because the Lord was going to appear and save them. How incredible is this story? And I'm telling you, it gets deeper and deeper than this. I have a lot of it in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel. Not all of these parts are in there, but some of this has just been revealed, but it goes with other parts that are in there. And it's available at olivepresspublisher.com if you'd like to get a copy of that book. And you can read all about it on that page on olivepresspublisher.com website. And look where the banner says the almond tree, and you can read all about it. You can just keep scrolling down. Uh, it looks like you can stop in one place, but just keep scrolling and reading about it. And you'll see what people said about it as well. Um, it's just truly incredible. So if you weren't excited in the last video, you should be excited in this one because I just added some incredible truths connected to the word harpazo, plucked fruit. He's going to seize us and pluck us out of here and pluck us out of this world that is our oppressor like Egypt was the Hebrews' oppressor. And he's our hope and our renewal the meanings of the word carpos and carpus. So they ate that at the Passover Seder and dipped the vegetable in the salt water. And it says that he will dry all of our tears. And that's what the salt water represents. When we are raptured and resurrected from uh, the, those that are dead are resurrected the tears will be wiped away. We will be that plucked fruit. Hallelujah. This is so cool, guys. I am so thrilled about this. And I hope you will like and subscribe. And please support my channel at paypal.me forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O if you'd like to. I really could use the help. And my donation address is Kimberly K. Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado is C-O, and 80544. I just cannot believe, you know, I was sleeping in my bed, and I woke up early in the morning, and I was laying there in the dark, and all of a sudden, I got these other pieces of the puzzle. So thank the Holy Spirit, and I hope that when you come to my channel, don't just look at the one video you just saw, but look at all the other ones preceding it, because 
you know, I'm kind of revealing things a little at a time sometimes. All right, well, signing out for now. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I'll see you in the next episode.